Hey guys, so today I thought I would do a trying a new makeup video. Uh, I haven't done one of these in a while. I don't do them very often, but I really wanted to kind of dive deeper into these by Terry Powders. I mentioned that to you when I hauled these and I really, really love the original, the Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. And they have come out with these tinted powders and I've been really, really anxious to try these out. So we're definitely gonna be using these today. I also have this little blister pack from Chanel. This is their new, newish Ultra Latent Velvet. And I completely passed on this originally because it has a velvet matte finish. I'm not really into a matte finish. And then a few people told me that it's actually not that matte, that it actually has kind of more of a natural skin-like finish. So I thought I would give this a shot. And I think all of these colors actually could work for me. This on my forehead, this on like the lower half of my face. So we're gonna be using these, hopefully it's enough. So Laura Mercier was generous enough to send me over their new Parisian uh, nudes eyeshadow palette and I just think that is beautiful so I really wanted to give this a shot I'm a big fan of Laura Mercier uh, products in general and uh, their eyeshadows especially so wanted to use that and I've been doing a lot of review videos and those can be intense in a way or just they're very very focused so I thought this video would just be nice for me and hopefully for you just to kind of break it up a little bit take it down a notch just chill put on some makeup Etc. Etc. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, let me go ahead and start with the foundation then. I'm not the biggest fan of samples, but we will give this a shot. I'm um, just taking a quick look at the ingredients on the back here, and I do see alcohol as an ingredient. It is one, two, three, four, five. It's the sixth ingredient. So just FYI. And I'm not one to use uh, foundation or like skincare products with alcohol in them because I have very dry eczema prone skin. But I think I think that's just something you'll determine for yourself. So I just want to let you know that alcohol is in here. Uh, so let me go ahead and start with B20. That is the lightest shade here. And they've also uh, given me B30 and B40. So there is B20. That's actually a pretty decent shade match. So B40 is probably gonna be a little bit too dark for me. We will see. I'm gonna use my BK Beauty foundation brush. And it has that typical Chanel fragrance. That is actually a pretty decent shade match for me. Well, let's continue with B20. I still have quite a bit left, which is good. I'm always afraid these little blister packs just don't provide enough uh, foundation, but, but I think it is actually a pretty decent amount for one use. I'm trying to think. Yeah, when it comes to Chanel products, I think I am usually around the 20 range. Like I have the Sublimage Le Tent here and I do have the shade, yeah, I do have the shade 20 beige. So as far as I can tell, so far, the shade range is very consistent in this foundation as it is in the other foundations. And then this Le Beige, I don't think this was numbered. Yeah, this one is just, I use light in the Le Beige. And then in the Water Fresh Tint, I medium light. So just as a reference. Oh, and one more, I have the Chanel CC Cream, and this one I do have in 20 beige. So again, I do think it's very consistent with the rest of its line. And since we have it, and because my forehead is a bit darker than the rest of my face, I'm gonna go ahead and try B30 for my forehead. Just turned on my overhead light because I forgot to turn that on. Uh, but I do think B30 is a nice, shade match for my forehead and B20 for the rest of my face. But if I had to pick one, I'd probably just go with B20 and kind of bronze up my forehead. So let's see, the finish of this, it definitely has a matte feeling to it. Like when I actually touch my face, there's no kind of tackiness or anything. It doesn't feel heavy on my face at all. It is actually a formula that's a little bit on the thinner side. And I would have to agree with my friends that told me that this is not as matte of a finish as what velvet matte would make you think. So let me take a closer look here. Yeah, I think it actually looks not that matte on the skin. I find it to be very, very uh, natural and really nice. I didn't put that much of it on. You know, I don't really like a heavy coverage. I feel like with just that small amount, I got like a nice light medium coverage. Could probably build this up to a medium fairly easily. Wow, I like this foundation more than I thought I would. I will definitely have to put this on my list of foundations to try in the future, but I do think it looks really nice. It does look much more natural than I thought it would. So I don't have any new concealers to try, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my Sicily Stilo Lumiere, which is what I've been using pretty much uh, consistently for the past, 
I don't know, several months. I feel like I'm doing a project pan with this one product. <laughs> now that I've used so much of it, I feel like, you know what, let's just use it until it's gone. And I can't believe it's still going, not that I use a ton, but I've really been using this almost every single day for forever and still, still going strong. All right, now for the product I'm probably most excited for, the By Terry Hyaluronic powders. So I have number one, Rosy Light, which has like a little pinky tinge. I have number two, Apricot Light, which has like a little bit of a peachy tinge. And then I have number 200, Natural, which is like a light skin tone. So I'm most curious about the Rosy Light and the Apricot Light. I'm going to try the Rosy Light on this side of my face. And when it comes to like pinky tinged powders, for me on my skin tone, they can sometimes look really brightening and you know, beautiful and really kind of give me like a lit look. Uh, and sometimes they can look a little chalky. <laughs> so I'm very, very curious about this. And these powders come in like a little sifter like this. So I'm going to go ahead actually and just try and get some into the cap by flipping it over. So I'm going to go ahead and use the double ended brush that they sent over to me. This was all sent over to me by By Terry, by the way. And they also included this double ended brush, which has a foundation brush and then a nice big fluffy powder brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this side and brush that on. With the original Hydra powder, the one that's like colorless, it's, it's white, I know less is more when it comes to that powder. I feel like if I put just a little bit too much of that on, my skin starts to look a little bit too matte, a little bit too dry. So I'm being very careful with this powder, but I do wanna put enough of it on so you guys can see. It's actually done a really nice job, I think, brightening. I don't feel like this side looks chalky. What do you guys think? I think it actually looks like brighter. All right, so that is the Rosy Light. And for those of you who maybe are new to my channel or just don't know, I have a very neutral, I guess you could say. I have a very neutral skin tone. My forehead's a little bit warmer. Uh, the bottom half of my face is a little bit cooler. My body skin is a little bit cooler, but not all of it. Anyway, basically any part of my skin that has seen more sun than others has become a lot more warm the older I get. So I think I did have very cool uh, pink undertones when I was younger, but like I said, my forehead and some other parts of my body have become very like yellow warm based as I've gotten older. So it's been interesting. It's been interesting, but I just want to let you know so that you have some sort of reference point. So I would say like my cheeks around here, it's fairly neutral. It's fairly neutral. I feel like it's kind of like right in between. So let's go ahead and try this number two apricot light. And you can see it has a very visible kind of peachy tinge to it. I wonder if you guys can see the difference. In person, I can see just the slightest, slightest difference. I almost feel like the pinky side is for winter and the peachy side is for summertime. If that makes sense. I mean, it's warmer and cooler. So I guess, I guess that's why I'm thinking that. So again, this is the rosy light and then this is the apricot light. Let me put a little bit more of the apricot light on just so I can match up with the rosy light side. I think if I had to pick, at least right now, and I did get a little bit of color when I was in Japan, uh, it's, it's mostly faded at this point, but if I had to pick one, I think I would go with the apricot light. I feel like it kind of brings a little bit more I don't know, color to my skin, a little bit more life. The rosy light I think does a really nice job just kind of uh, like brightening it. And once my skin gets much paler in the winter time, I think I would probably go for the rosy light. But right now I kind of really like this apricot light. I think it just gives me kind of like a healthy looking complexion. I hope you guys can see the difference. It is very, very faint. And through the camera, I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell. All right, and last but not least, we have 200 Natural. And I'm gonna use that on my forehead and around my eyes. And my impression with these powders uh, so far is that I don't have to be quite as careful with these as I do with the original white one. Yeah, with these powders, I feel like I'm putting on a bit more than I normally would with the white, and it seems fine. So this is the 200 Natural that I'm applying. 
and completely translucent. I feel like for my skin tone, 200 is a really, really good match. But yeah, these powders, just like the original, they're doing a very good job kind of like mattifying and taking away any excess shine without making my skin look too dry. So that is awesome, especially because I have such dry skin. Oh, one thing I wanna do, okay, I'm gonna go back to the Rosy Light and I'm going to use it the way I use the original, which is with my finger and I like to pat it under my eye and it gives such an incredible blurring effect. <clears throat> Excuse me, it gives such incredible blurring effect. I wanna see if these powders do the same thing. So I'm gonna use the Rosy Light under this eye and then the Apricot Light under this eye. So pick up a little bit on my finger. I'm going to press that in. Oh yeah, that looks nice. That looks nice, does the same thing as the original. Nice kind of like blurring effect right down there. And now I've got the apricot light and I'm gonna do the same thing underneath this eye. And I don't know if you guys can see it. Again, I'm sorry, I hope the camera's really picking it up. But this side, I feel like that color just didn't do much. I really like the rosy light underneath this eye. I feel like it did a lot of brightening without it being too obvious, but I don't know if you guys can see, it almost darkens up my kind of darker skin down here. It's so interesting how just a little bit of a tint can, I think, make a pretty big difference. So those are the new By Terry Tinted Hyaluronic Hydro Powders. I was so excited when these came out and I'm so thankful that they sent these over to me. So thank you so much to By Terry for sending these over, letting me play around with them, letting me review them for you guys. So big thank you to By Terry for sending them over to me. So next up I have a product that I wasn't sure I wanted and then I thought, you know what, it's so different, let me give it a shot. But this is the Dior uh, Rouge Blush in 823. This is new for their like fall season. And this is the one that I think has raised a lot of eyebrows. No one is quite sure what to do with this. Um, but Dior, at least on the Dior site, they said this is for every skin tone and it's meant to be used, you know, as a blush. Uh, but I do think because it's such a cool toned taupey color, I think it would be great kind of as a blushy contour. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm a little bit nervous about this. I don't know how this is gonna come off on my skin tone, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a brush that is on the fluffier side. All right, I just cleaned a bunch of my face brushes. I'm so excited. This is the Chikahota GSN4. It has a uh, squirrel hair, so it's gonna pick up a light amount of product. So I'm just gonna start with the teensiest amount and just put this right back here see what happens. I'm just so curious if my skin is gonna turn it cooler, turn it warmer, not do anything to it. Basically putting it all over on my cheekbone, underneath my cheekbone. It is definitely starting to give me a little bit of a shadow there. I don't, I don't mind it so much. I'm trying to figure out if it's just making my cheek look dirty. Maybe, maybe a little bit. <laughs> I think for me, on my skin tone, it looks like a contour shade. It's definitely cool enough. My skin isn't warming it up. It doesn't appear on the skin differently than it does in the pan. It pretty much, pretty much looks like this, very, very cool toned. So I'm just gonna use it more as a contour, I think. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great contour. That gives a really, really nice, like, shadowed effect. Wow, did I just overdo it? I, <laughs> I feel like I have. Uh, some really, really strong contour there. Let me blend this out a little bit more. Laura Mercier also sent over some of their face illuminators, their highlighters. These are not uh, brand new, but I never purchased the regular size. I had purchased some uh, kind of like holiday palette, I think, many, many years ago, and I had four of these in there, like false, four smaller ones. And I decluttered it because I just never, ever use them, but they're so beautiful. Um, so this one is Devotion. Isn't that, isn't that so pretty? Look at that shine. So that's Devotion. They also sent over Addiction. This one's really pretty too. So this one's very golden. Devotion is much cooler. And then they also sent over Indiscretion, which is like more of a peachy toned. I think I'm gonna use this last one, this one, Indiscretion. And I'm gonna use my Wayne Goss number 14 brush. This is a really nice, light, airy brush. I'm gonna brush that over. Okay. 
that is pretty. And I feel like as soon as I dusted the highlight on, it made the contour look so much darker. I'm wondering if this looks just a little bit too muddy on my face. It's really hard to tell in this lighting. All right, moving on to blush. I did a video uh, dedicated to this blush quad from Hourglass. This is part of their Ghost Holiday Collection. Um, but I wanna use this color here, which is a little bit on the like neutral cooler side. It has like a plummy tone to it. And I thought maybe that would go nicely with this contour and this highlight. I'm gonna use my uh, Ruffer 05 brush. Oh yeah, I think that goes with this Dior contour blush nicely. So again, that is this color that I used in here, which is the blush in Infinite Flush. And as for eyebrows, I don't have anything new, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill in with my Hourglass Arch Brow Sculpting Pencil. I have it in Soft Brunette, and then I will tame my brows with my Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel. All right, let's dive into this Laura Mercier uh, Parisian Nudes Eyeshadow Palette. This is really, really beautiful. Okay, let me start with a big fluffy brush here. This is the Isom G29. I just wanna go ahead and lay down an all over lid shade. So I'm gonna start with this one, which is, are there names on here? Oh, there are names. That shade is called New, N-U-E. I'm gonna take my Sonia G Blender Pro Brush and go into this matte shade here as a transition shade. All right, now that we have kind of a basic framework down, I am very much drawn to this color. I would imagine most people's eyes are drawn right to this color, so I think I definitely wanna use that one. Let me start by putting that onto my lid and let's see what happens. I've got my Isom W21 brush. Ooh. It's really pretty, I love that green duochrome that shines through. I'm just going back into that transition matte shade and using that to kind of blend out a little bit. I wonder if I can use this shade wet. What do you guys think? I'm gonna try this Inglot Duraline, which I think I hauled for you guys um, in that video that I posted while I was in Japan. So I'm gonna dip my brush into the Duraline and dip into the shade. Ooh. Now you can really see the green. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and then I'm gonna blend out again with some dry powder and my Blender Pro brush with some of that green shade just to kind of blend it out and then some of this uh, matte transition shade. I really like this green shade, it's so pretty. And the one thing I really like about these Laura Mercier eyeshadows is they're very straightforward. They're pressed eyeshadows, they're not that powdery, um, they're not overly pigmented, so they're not really scary to use. They blend really, really nicely. They're very true to color. You know, I feel like um, what I see in the pan is what I get on my eyelids, which is also really nice. So I've always really enjoyed Laura Mercier shadows, and I don't think they're talked about enough. So that is the Parisian Nudes eyeshadow palette. Really, really gorgeous, and I think really, really on trend. Kind of cool toned. You've got your blue there, and you've got a little bit of warmth. If you want to kind of warm things up a little bit, you've got this gold tone. So really beautiful palette. I think also really, really well thought out. I think you have nice basics in your mattes here, and then some beautiful shimmers. So big, big thank you to Laura Mercier for sending this over to me. All right, and as for eyeliner, the newest eyeliner that I've acquired is this Victoria Beckham uh, Satin Kajal Liner, and I have it in the shade Bronze, and I think it'll actually go really nicely with this look. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I'm really enjoying this liner. It goes on so, so smoothly, so softly, and eventually it sets down, but before it does, you can kind of smudge it out, but once it sets down, it really stays put. It's just a really great liner, so. Let me go ahead and apply this to my upper and my lower lash line. I'll tight line with it. I will water line with it. All the good stuff. And there is a little smudger sponge on the other side of this eyeliner, which makes it really easy to smudge out the liner. So I've been using my Tom Ford Lash Rays Mascara fairly religiously and I think it's time for me to let it go. It's been it's been a while. It's been a long while and it's starting to flake. It started to flake. I continue to use it and 
it's just continuing to flake. So I'm gonna go back to a mascara that I hauled and opened a little while ago. So I'm like, I should really use it before it goes bad. This is the Sicily So Curl Mascara. I have it in number two, which I think is a brown. Yeah, it's a brown shade. And I never really kind of formed an opinion on this, so I should probably use this a little bit more. But they had come out with a So Volume Mascara, and I just, I'm not really into clumpy mascaras is what I realized, and most volumizing mascaras are a little bit on the clumpier side. So they recommended me trying this So Curl Mascara. And again, I can't remember what I thought of this mascara. It's a little bit clumpy, but definitely not as clumpy as the So Volume. So not bad. I think what I like so much about the Lash Rays mascara is that it really lengthened my lashes, really made them look fairly long, and it did kind of keep a curl in my lashes, at least for a little while. I don't know that this mascara is doing that so much. Definitely not lengthening my lashes. Anyway, I'll report back on this Sicily mascara, but let's move on to lips. So I did purchase a new color from the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude line, well, new to me. Um, I had originally purchased the Noah and the Sammy colors, and I really wanted the Michelle color since that's my name, um, and it was out of stock, and finally I just ordered off of Beautylish. So this is Michelle color 12NB, which is neutral beige, and here is the Michelle color. So I think that'll go with the rest of my makeup. Let's go ahead and put this on. I think it's a little bit warmer than it is neutral, but that could just be my lips. My lips sometimes uh, pulls really, really warm. I think it looks okay. I'm gonna go ahead and layer a lip gloss on top. I hauled these a long time ago and I just have never used them. They're the new Glossier lip glosses and they have two shades, two new shades. One is holographic and one is red rouge. I wanna try the holographic one just to see how it works as a lip topper. So this is what the holographic lip gloss from Glossier looks like. I just brought some onto the back of my hand so that I could use my fingers. Ooh, definitely added a little bit of juiciness to the lips. So thank you so, so much for tuning in and spending some time with me. Let me know if you have any questions on any of these products down below in the comments section. Uh, everything will be listed down below in my description box if you are interested in taking a look at more detailed info on anything. And don't forget to subscribe before you leave. I would love that. And I will see you in my next video.